Well, it's been two weeks since rioters at UC Berkeley used violence to force the cancellation of a speech by Milo Yiannopoulos. Most people were appalled by what happened, but Yvette Falarca is not among those people. Besides working as a public school teacher in California, she is the national organizer for the Coalition to Defend Affirmative Action, Integration, and Immigrant Rights, and Fight for Equality by Any Means Necessary. BAM is the acronym. Flarka is willing to integrate violence into her political agenda, as you can see from this clip of her disrupting a rally last summer in Sacramento. Flarka helped organize the Berkeley protest, and she says activists ought to copy its tactics for other speakers and events around the country. Yvette Flarka is with us now. Yvette, thanks all for joining us. So, uh, you did a bunch of interviews after, and you were asked about this, and you were, to your credit, I think, very straightforward about it and unapologetic, and you said, yeah, this guy was a fascist, Milo's a fascist, and we shut him down. You didn't pretend otherwise. We shut him down, and that's what you do with fascists. I think I'm characterizing what you said correctly. Just so we can understand the standard here, what is a fascist? So a fascist is someone who's organizing a mass movement that's attacking women, immigrants, black people, other minority groups in a movement of genocide. That's what a fascist is. Okay. So it's someone who's committing violence? And it's someone who's committing violence and who's trying to organize other people to commit violence. Okay. And Milo Yiannopoulos is a fascist. Okay. So he's committed acts of violence against the protected groups you mentioned? Well, what he's doing is he's trying to be the youth face and the token that other people who are organizing violence try to hide behind. And right. so in all of his talks all over the country, what Yiannopoulos has done is whip up a whole lynch mob mentality where people who come to see him or his supporters not only agree with his views, but also attack other people. And that was certainly true in Washington state when he, one of his supporters came and actually shot an anti-fascist protester. But in Berkeley, we made sure that didn't happen because we were able to shut him down. So, um, my, but you're conceding that Milo himself has not committed acts of violence, and nor has he incited violence by the legal definition. He'd be in jail if he did. But you're saying that because people who agree with him have committed violence, he should not be allowed to speak. You know, fascist movement takes many forms, and it always tries to have one form that looks respectable and a little bit milder. But Yiannopoulos isn't just a stand-up comedian, and he isn't someone who just has ideas and posts them up on YouTube. He's someone who was funded by Breitbart and Steve Bannon to go around to college campuses to try to recruit other young people to then conduct those attacks on his behalf and on Trump's behalf. But I'm really, really glad to say that thousands of us were out there last week or February 1st and made sure that there were thousands of us to make sure that we defended our campus, this community, and especially okay. the immigrant and Muslim students who were under attack and have been so under attack if, by him and other fascists. Right, and by using violence, I mean, you don't, you don't shy away from that by any means necessary is the name of your group, and so it, it implies violence. So what should we do with fascists? I mean, if you think that someone is espousing genocide, what should we do with them? I mean, should that person be allowed to walk free? Should we put him in jail? Should we kill him? Should we exile him? I mean, what, it's a sincere question. If you're willing to use violence because you think someone is espousing genocide, what's the penalty for that? Well, first we've got to make sure we nip it in the bud and we make sure that they're not allowed to recruit and act as if it's respectable to call for the mass murder of millions of people. In fact, millions who make up the majority of people in this nation at this point. Okay, and so, so they just, can't just hide to be clear, there's no, Milo, Milo Yiannopoulos, this is not a defense of him, just a factual point, has not ever said that in public anyway, not that we have a record of. There's no evidence that he has called for the genocide of anybody, as you know. But you're saying by transference in some way, he inspires people who believe that, I guess. But, but you're, not getting, you're not getting my question. Like, what, when you say nip in the bud, should he be allowed to go on the subway and talk to the guy next to him about perhaps joining his movement? Or should he be allowed to talk to people in restaurants? Or what should we do with the fascist who you believe is inspiring genocide? So first of all, the alt-right is a neo-fascist movement. And they're trying to hide behind some softer versions of 
their more open counterparts who identify themselves as Nazis. But they're still part of the same movement, first of all. Mm -hmm. Second of all, when someone is trying to speak at a campus or at a rally, they're doing it not just because they have an opinion, but someone like Yiannopoulos or any other alt writer or fascist or neo-fascist is doing it to recruit other people. Huh. No, we don't let them recruit. And in fact, when you look back at the Holocaust and the lessons that we draw from that, we don't say, oh, well, at least we let them voice their opinion. We say never again. Okay, well, so, again, and, and when, now, and when, when we under, say that, we, we elevate people like Dietrich Bonhoeffer or members of the plot against the leader of Nazi Germany to kill him. So, I mean, that was the response, of course, to the leader of that fascist movement. Most people think it was legitimate. Do you think, you're not answering my question, that people like Milo, who you've decided are fascists, should be allowed to speak in public? You said they weren't allowed to speak at Berkeley. He should, should not he be allowed, be allowed to speak, to speak, speak in public corner? to spread his racist and misogynistic and homophobic lies. No, he does not have the right to do that. What about when he's trying to, when he's using his speech to whip up attacks on people? No, he doesn't have the right to do that. So and I to wonder, spread lies about our humanity? No, he doesn't. Okay, so you're and not we allowed have to say right things to that you ourselves think are in untrue. That. Well, I mean, of course, in the case of Berkeley, no, he that's was not, not what I said. Okay. I didn't say you're not allowed okay. to say things let, that are untrue. Ask, but me, if you're trying to spread racism and hostility, misogyny, rape, whip up people to lynch people, or to certainly have that mentality to rape people or to lynch them, absolutely not. And any so decent human being, I'm whether it was in a classroom or at a restaurant, if they heard someone doing that, would turn around and tell them, you need to stop talking. You are not welcome here. This is not a safe environment. You need to go. Well, that's yeah, what we did I wonder at UC if they Berkeley, would, and that was a good thing. hit them or set fire. So you're a middle school teacher, which may surprise some of our students, or rather some of our viewers, that you have students. There, uh, uh, the First Amendment was always kind of the cornerstone of American civic life, the idea that you have the right to say something that other people may vehemently disagree with, but you have that right. It's enshrined in the Bill of Rights. Do you teach that to your students? The First Amendment is about free speech, but that's not an abstraction. And if there was someone in my classroom who was espousing rape or genocide or attacks on Muslims, I would certainly make sure that I stood up for my, the rest of my students and told them they need to stop. And if they refused to, they would need to leave. Would you so hit in them? Fact, in fact, fascism wait, but isn't just wait, about abstract. No, no, I'm, no, I'm not finished, though, yet. Oh, and I'm not finished yet. If there is a fascist in any situation that I was in, I uh -huh. would call for other people to take action too, but it's not just about the immediate moment. Right. It's okay, also but within the context of building a movement. But I don't and want this to be abstract. There is a movement against you Donald Trump. Now. You're getting abstract. And against You're getting fascism. Getting I want to bring this back not to the all. concrete, as, as you said, and rightly so. So, if there was a student in your class who started espousing what you believe is fascism, and you said you need to leave, you need to be quiet, this, you need to leave, and he didn't not, leave, would you hit him as you hit that protester? Would you beat him up? No, of course not. But that's what not mean, what we're not. talking I, about we here. We're talking about someone. people who, you know what? In Sacramento, there were fascists who had knives tied at the ends of sticks, and they uh -huh. stabbed people, including Not the man us. that you hit. He and looked kind so, of unarmed to me. Oh, yes, actually, they did. <laughs> uh -huh. And so, and no, and it's funny to you, but it's actually not funny to the rest no, of us. No, and I that's why we take this really you, seriously. I, uh, I know that you take it seriously, and that's why I'm asking you a really simple question. But, I, but I am serious as a heart. I am oh, I serious as a heart. Well, I believe too. you. Oh, I believe that you're serious. And we're not talking oh, no about a classroom. That. We're but talking about saying, people if, who are trying to kill it. and murder people and who've already done it. I got and we're trying it. to but create standing, a hostile environment on these campuses in order uh -huh. to do that. No, that's not a safe environment for immigrant students. That's right. not a safe environment for women or Muslim students or trans <laughs> students. <laughs> okay. And so, yeah, we have a right you're to defend ourselves and real free speech. Let's go one last question, Eva, if I may. So if you're standing, I just want to know, like, the protocol for anti-fascist activists like yourself. You're standing on a street corner, someone starts saying something you don't like, and you think, boy, that's an act of hostility, that person's a fascist. Be no, quiet, but you're, you, you are me. misrepresenting the words that I've been saying. This isn't about I'm, not I'm, liking this is a, something. This, this is isn't question. about Ben and Jerry's versus stone cold pizza or something. Uh -huh. This is about the lives of real people, immigrants who are under attack now, I got it. Muslims no, who are being that. massacred, and I'm women asking who are being you, raped. How deep so, is your so commitment? So you're the one trivializing this, not well, me. No, I'm not in any way trivializing. And I ask you a sincere question: To what extent would you go to stop that person from spreading genocidal propaganda? Would I would you... call for people to counter protest, to stand okay. up, and to shut down. Any but what do you mean by shut down? And like, what if, what if I want to keep talking? I'm saying something that you find appalling. But you know what? This, I've got a First Amendment right. I'm an American. What would you do? 
So a bunch of people come and say, stop that. I say, no, I'm not going to stop that. I'm an American. What are you going to do next? You uh, know, the First you. Amendment, you know, you want to talk about the First Amendment? Coretta okay. Scott King's letter wasn't allowed to be read on the floor of the Senate last week under the Constitution okay. in the well, Senate. That's exactly and what yet, happened. And, and yet, <laughs> at the same teacher, time, you are the one then who's actually okay. trying to defend someone like a fascist speaking okay. and recruiting at a college campus. All right, Yvette, I'm proud to say that we all stood up and we shut him down. I don't want to abridge your speech down. rights. All right, thanks for coming on and showing us what you believe.